welcome back to the channel Asclepium. My name's Jade and I'm a fifth year medical student at the University of Cambridge and today I have a video for you which is my journey to medicine. So kind of from when I first realised I wanted to study medicine, how I like worked to try and help my application and then also the application process that I went through. So as I said I'm in my fifth year so I applied from 2012 to 2013 and this is quite a while ago now, I realise, but obviously it is applicable for anyone out there who is either going through the process or is thinking of doing it. So starting with when I first realised I wanted to study medicine. So I realised probably when I was around 16, 17. So up until that point, I'd always thought that I wanted to become a teacher when I left school. And then once I um, got a job in a local pharmacy when I was 16 and in my final GCSE year, I, were, like, I just realised that I wanted to work in healthcare. Um, I really enjoyed patient interaction and also just having the understanding of what the medications did that we were dispensing for the patients. So I knew I definitely wanted to work in healthcare and I really wanted to explore kind of where in healthcare I wanted to work. So I thought of all the different avenues for possibly going into pharmacy, maybe training to become a pharmacist, um, being a nurse, midwife. And then I thought about becoming a doctor and I managed to organise some more work experience and this was in a GP practice. And I just really enjoyed just once again the patient interaction I just I felt like because I'd always loved science it was a really like perfect way for me to apply this understanding for the benefit of others and I just yeah so I kind of I knew from that point on that I wanted to become a doctor and from that point on I was just trying to like help my application for UCAS and things like that so yeah I first realized when I was like 16 and 17 and a few of my like colleagues at university realized like way before this but my bit of advice from this would be it really doesn't matter when you, and if and when you like first think you want to become a, like a doctor and study medicine because obviously I realized then and I had around two years to like help my application some people will realize later also on my course we have um, students who are studying the graduate course and they've already done a degree and then come into medicine so there really is no time point that you have to decide like before so I had my work experience in the GP practice and I continued working part-time in the pharmacy and I knew that at that point I just needed to get as best grades as I could in my GCSEs. Off the top of my head I think I got like six or seven A stars and an A and yeah so I was really happy with that. So I started studying at a different sixth form when I finished my GCSEs. It was quite far out of the area, I did have to travel quite a bit but I just wanted to have a different experience, meet some new people and I just, when I was attending different open days for the sixth forms I just got a really good feel for this one particular sixth form that I did end up attending and I have to say it was some of the best years I've ever had in education absolutely loved it made some fantastic friends and I would say that if you are veering more towards going somewhere else for your A-levels if you've got good reason definitely go for it uh, so yeah so I studied biology chemistry physics and maths throughout that year and I also had my part-time job in the pharmacy still ongoing and just to make it clear obviously I did have extracurricular stuff going on I was really interested in like beauty therapy so I regularly did like nails and makeup for people for events and I also went to the gym regularly so Obviously I was doing a lot for my application to study medicine, but I did have other stuff going on at the time because you can't just devote every hour of every day to it, let's be honest. That was during the year. And then my plan, so obviously I did my exams in the summer and I don't know about anyone else, but I'm okay when it comes to preparing for exams and if I've got a strategy of my revision and things like that. Obviously there is a natural stress of exams and revision, but I'm fine. It's the bit afterwards that I struggle with sometimes in terms of when you're waiting for results. I know for GCSE and A-level, you have a very long time between doing the exams and getting your results. So my strategy at the end of AS was that I was going to do my exams in the summer and then I booked my UK CAT for two days before the results day. For some people, this would be insane and they couldn't do it just because of the stress of the exam and still waiting for results. But for me, it worked really well. I had something to focus on through the summer and it meant that I literally finished the UK CAT, got my results straight away for that, had a day to like debrief and so on and then obviously got my AS results the next day. So I'd say probably four to six weeks before I did the UK CAT I started preparing for it and I used two main resources. So I used I think it was like the 600 UK CAT question book. There's probably like a 1000 UK CAT question book by now. I don't honestly know but I used that type of resource and I also used Medify so this was an online resource. I found it really useful because another quirk that I have is that I find it quite useful to prepare for exams in the format that I'm actually going to do it. And I found that it was really useful because obviously the UK CAT is an online exam and you do it using a screen. So I found it really useful to use Medify, do maybe an hour or two each day, just chipping away at the questions online. And I, that's basically how I prepared. So thanks to Medify for making this video possible. And also thanks to Medify all those years ago for helping me to prepare for my UK CAT. Uh, so as I say, I did this two days before and I got an average score of 660. And I'd read online on things like the student room and things like that, that you need 750 plus to apply at this university and so on. And I was kind of a bit disheartened by my score, I'm not gonna lie. But looking back, I'd say 
as with anything, you never know until you try. So I kind of took that maybe it wasn't a score that I would have really hoped for, but it was still a decent score and it did get me an interview at the university I wanted to interview at with my UK CAT score. So got my score for the UK CAT and then as I say, I got my results two days later and I got four A's. So I'd really enjoyed all of my AS levels. As I say, I enjoyed the six women, the friendships I'd made and also the, the subjects that I studied. But I knew that I wanted to drop one of my subjects for A2 just simply because I still had my part-time job and I wanted to make sure that I knew that the following year was going to be quite hard going in terms of applying and hopefully interviews, that I wanted to still make sure that I had some time to prepare for other things and just have time for myself. So I decided to drop um, physics for A2 and yeah, it was a bit of a difficult decision because I'd always thought that I would drop my maths but I got an eye on 100% of my UMS for AS maths so I thought be silly not to carry it on. So that takes us to then. So as I said, I'd already done my UK CAT and I knew that I wanted to do the BMAT to uh, apply to Cambridge. I had looked because obviously some universities use UK CAT and some use BMAT. I knew that I definitely want to apply to Newcastle, which used the UK CAT, so it was no brainer to do it. And I definitely want to apply to Cambridge, so I had to do both the UK CAT and the BMAT. And then it was a case of the only thing that you need to consider is that obviously you've done a UK CAT before you apply, so you know your score. So some people can choose to apply strategically, but with the BMAT, you apply before you've got your BMAT one, before you've sat the exam. So it was kind of then a toss up of, do I apply to universities that solely use the BMAT because I wasn't as happy with my UK CAT score? Or do I just go for whichever universities I'm interested in? And to be honest, that's what I did. <laughs> so for the remainder of the summer, I uh, started working on my personal statement. And this is something that I'd been, I'd had discussions with uh, the tutor at my college with about, um, so we had brainstorms from ideas and things like how I might go about it. What I should mention is that I'm the first person from my sixth form to attend Cambridge University and also study medicine. So there was quite a lot invested in me in terms of applying and trying to get me through the application process. It wasn't just new to me and my family, it was new to the sixth form as well. So there was a lot of people trying their best with me, but obviously it is quite difficult when you have no idea what you're doing to try and find out what you should be doing. So we're chipping away at my personal statement and over the rest of the summer I did focus on this. It was mostly finished by the time I went back in the September uh, because obviously I'd been focusing on the UK CAT and then suddenly I did have a lot of free time after that so I did focus on my personal statement. So I went back in the September with my three subjects and my personal statement touch and go mostly done. Then I knew that obviously I had to prepare for the BMAT in the November so I would use my free period so I think in when I was in my secondary grade level I had a late start on a Tuesday so every Tuesday morning I would put aside four to five hours where I knew I was going to do some BMAT revision and this was mostly just going through my core like GCSE science and um, revision guides make sure I was preparing for each of the sections but also because I hadn't done English since GCSE I spoke to the English teacher at my sixth form and she said that she would be happy to if I did some practice questions for the essay well the short answer essay whatever they want to call it section uh, she would look through it for me so obviously that was really useful and as I say my sixth form were trying to help me in any way they could I prepared for my BMAT did that in the November I'd applied to university by that point and I decided to apply for Cambridge with my BMAT score, Newcastle with the UK CAT, Edinburgh with the UK CAT and Leeds with the UK CAT. Things might have changed, I'm not sure if they also use the same entrance exam as they did then, but that was the general format. And for my reserve, because obviously if you were applying for the standard undergrad, A100 medicine course, <laughs> if you will, then you apply for four out of the five for medicine if you want to. And my reserve option was to study biomedical sciences at Newcastle University. So obviously you do that application quite early in the year. I heard quite soon back after that I had an offer to study biomedical sciences. So I was really happy that I had that offer under my belt that if all else failed, I did actually have somewhere to go and study. And it was obviously being interested in medicine and the understanding of the science behind it, biomedical studies would have been a good way to, a good route to go down if it hadn't worked out. So after that, I, I got, I did my BMAT. For the life of me, I can't remember my scores were for it, but I, I knew I'd got my results back. And I then, I think, Two days after I got my results for the BMAT, I uh, heard from Peter House to say that I had been called for interview. So this was majorly exciting. I also had mocks going on at six form, so they obviously had to understand that there'd been a lot going on recently and maybe didn't perform as well as I should have in those, but it all worked out fine. <laughs> and basically just then spent my time preparing for interview at Peter House. Did that at the start of the December. And to be honest, that was all I heard back before, um, up until that point from any of the universities about my medicine applications. So I did my interview then and you don't hear back until the January about that. So I knew that that part of the application, I'd done as much as I could have. We have videos on the interview application process and things like that. So if you are interested, go and make sure to watch that. Uh, just before Christmas, I did hear back from Newcastle University to say that I'd been offered an interview in the February. So obviously I was elated about that. So I'd had my interview at Cambridge and I had the offer of an interview there. 
I heard back from Leeds, I think shortly after the Christmas, I can't quite remember, just to say that I hadn't been called for an interview there um, and that that uh, application was unsuccessful. And then I think up until towards the end of the application cycle for medicine, I then heard back from Edinburgh to say that I'd gotten to the final stage. They didn't interview back then. I think they might have introduced uh, interviews now. Uh, but just to say that unfortunately I'd, I hadn't quite made the cut, but they would offer me a different course like in their biomedical unit. So I did my interview for Newcastle and obviously this interview was completely different to my Cambridge one. Uh, it was a lot more, I would say your standard medicine interview as to what you would expect maybe if you were to read stuff online. Whereas obviously the Cambridge one, even between colleges can vary quite a lot. So it was quite different um, and I gave it my best shot essentially. So as soon after I heard back from Newcastle, unfortunately to say that I wasn't successful with that application. So in all, I had my one off at study medicine at Cambridge and unfortunately I had three more rejections to study medicine at the other universities I tried and I had an offer to study biomedical sciences at Newcastle University and also I think medicinal chemistry at Edinburgh. So the point here is that guys, when you're going through this application process, you could get four offers to study medicine, you could get one offer, you might not get any. But the main thing is if when you are applying, you only need one offer. So even though I didn't get any offers from the other universities, I'm still where I am today. In my fifth year studying medicine at Cambridge and I know that what happened was right for me. So for the UCAS at the end of, uh, when it came to applying to offers, so I used Cambridge University as my firm and I used Medicinal Chemistry at Edinburgh as my insurance. And from that point on, it was a case of just working uh, solidly to try and get the grades to get into Cambridge. So my offer was A star AA and it didn't matter which subject the A star was in. So yeah, so I think that's possibly the most nervous up until that point in my education that I'd been about exams. I knew there was a lot riding on it in terms of trying to get the grade, but I was still trying to make sure to look after myself at the same time. And results day came along shortly after that and I got three A stars in biology, chemistry and maths and I had met my offer for Cambridge University and I still can't quite get over it to be honest. I'm, to be honest, I have one year left and I'm still a bit like, wow, I managed it like all those years ago. So this was beyond my wildest dreams. I'd never ever thought that I would even apply to Cambridge, never mind get in. So yeah, it was challenging at times, but it was definitely worth it. Okay, so that is an overview of my journey to medicine. I hope that it's been helpful. Obviously, if you're thinking about going through the application process or currently going through it, or you've, you've finished it and you just have your process to compare to mine, I hope it is useful. Um, as I said, it is difficult at times and, you know, I'm very grateful to be in the position that I am now. I will have to work very hard to get here. And if anyone has any questions or needs any advice at any point, make sure to comment down below or get in touch with our social media. And yeah, thanks for watching. And if there's any video ideas that you'd like to see us do, then do um, comment them down below. And if not, then I'll see you next time for another video. Bye.